let's uh, let's jump on the phones if we can and uh, have a conversation with Aiden in Illinois. Uh, Aiden, what's on your mind tonight? Hi. Yes, um, I was listening from earlier, and I heard about how you, you were talking about working through uh, childhood traumas and whatnot, the children. I came from a fundamentalist Christian family. I'm I'm no longer religious. I'm mm-hmm. I'm an atheist, and I'm working through a lot of trauma. I went to a religious college and unfortunately experienced uh, a lot of <laughs> sexual abuse by a particular person there. And mm-hmm. I find that I'm kind of enacting the same situations, and sometimes. There are good outcomes, sometimes not, but I I guess I kind of wanted to know your thoughts on that, like what may be beneficial for me, not not that you would be giving medical advice, just that, you know, maybe from experience what might help me. I've I've been in good relationships recently, and I'm, I'm in therapy, but I also have found myself, like I said, repeating the same cycle, I guess. <laughs> mm, I hear that. Yeah, well, well, and maybe it's oh no, ahead. please, Ashley, jump okay. in. Like looking at the times where it didn't play out well, and like what what wasn't working about it, like, and also paying attention, like, am I in like a headspace for this? Like, if you're having a particularly like bad day, like acting those things out, like, could potentially not go well. And that may not be like the day to do right. It. But if you're like in like a good place and this like this feels like this could be something that I could get some enjoyment out and like really checking in with yourself beforehand and checking in with your partner too about like where your headspace is. Because if you're going in with like carrying like the weight of the world on your back that day, like you're not going to have like a good time and it's probably not going to feel good. And maybe there's a point of like asking yourself of like, have I played this out too much? Because that is possible of like where we're, where we are just like doing the same thing over and over and over again. Going and, through the motions. Yeah. And that like, is there a place of like where you feel like you could switch things up or like change, like just tweak like one different thing about it where the experience could feel different? Mm-hmm. That does yeah, make it, sense because for me, like, oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 please, Aiden. I want to hear from you. I was going to say that would make sense because I feel like, you know, I'm kind of like one night stands versus partners doesn't really matter. You know, I like a certain way. I'll be honest, like I'm an engineer. I am in charge of people all day. So going home and being a submissive is really nice. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But then I hit the point that like it's it's kind of like during like one, I, I can't really name the point and this gives me food for thought, like I said that I, I guess I hit a point and then suddenly I'm not okay anymore. This is not fun anymore, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm just, as you said, going through the motions literally and figuratively. And it, at that point just sucks. <laughs> and that's yeah. not with every partner, but you know, it, it, it is a, a cycle that tends to reappear. Well, and it's also okay to like, T- like take a breather like during sex like if there's a moment of like where you need to like reorient your headspace of like i'm not having a good time right now like that doesn't mean like you have to completely stop having sex if you don't want to but and be like hey like i need a second to like talk this out and i need a second to like put my head like in a different space and like then you can like pick up sex like where you left off mm-hmm. or in a different place and both of those things can be okay mm-hmm. yeah, yeah i think the sweet. important yeah, piece is like, that you I be guess present I just never thought that. Mm-hmm. yeah i mm-hmm. guess i've never really thought about it like that sorry to interrupt you <laughs> no, no not at all uh, i guess i just want to stress that so much of what we're talking about really comes down to uh presence you know mindfulness and I, I might encourage you to take a look at some of the episodes we've done before on mindfulness and sex or read a book like uh, Better Sex Through Mindfulness. But mm. an important piece of all of this is that if you are re- like working through the script the way that Ashley was saying, like doing the same thing in the same order, da-da, 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 
it can start to become chasing. You know, you, you did it once, you had a good experience, you're now trying to recreate that experience, and now you're becoming so fixated on a specific outcome, and how do we get there, and how do we get there last time, how do we make sure to get there now, that the outcome starts to override the actual experience itself, and if you're feeling like you are all of a sudden kind of looking around going, how did I get here, I would wonder if it's at least in part because you were becoming sort of consumed by follow, by playing that role, by being who you were supposed to be, rather than being curious about who you are in that specific moment. Does that resonate for you at all? Uh, it does and it doesn't. If, if I could say it's actually the opposite, where, again, like, I grew up in a very fundamentalist Christian family, so I wasn't really exposed to sex and stuff. You know, it was very much a puritanical. I'm, I'm shocked that we didn't have a purity, like, ball. <laughs> um, but basically, for me, when I was assaulted in college, it was very violent, very painful, um, very traumatic, sure. to put it succinctly. And mm-hmm. so I think what, what you said one of you may may have said earlier, gosh, I don't even know. So I apologize if I'm okay. I, if I'm misremembering, but um, about kind of reliving the trauma and trying to change the outcome. Like I feel like in that way, I was and still in a form am a child, and I'm trying to work through it and maybe change the outcome mm-hmm. of this horrible experience. And yet I'm struggling because then I kind of, it's almost like my body just hits fight, flight, or freeze. And I just kind of like freeze. <laughs> yeah. Like it yeah. Just... And, and that is a, a real concern because it is possible to re-traumatize ourselves, to, to put ourselves in a situation that looks like, feels like, smells like a experience that really hurt us. And so you, you do want to be at least mindful of that piece. But the, the meaningful distinction here, and, and actually I'd love for you to fill in the gaps or correct me where I'm wrong, I, I think that the meaningful distinction is whether you feel comfortable, whether you feel safe, whether your body is operating from what I might call a neuroception of safety. And if you are experiencing this partner, this moment as something that feels comfortable, as something that feels curious, as something that feels, dare I say, playful, rather than something that carries that same terrifying uh, weight as that original experience. Mm -hmm. Ashley, how does that resonate with you? Yeah, well, and I think that, like, also goes back to, like, it's okay to pause sex. And I think, like, that's not something that's, like, talked about as much, like, with adults. Like, it's okay to pause. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if you just have a cramp or, you know, somebody's going too fast or too slow or whatever else. (laughs) Yeah. Like, I'll be honest, like, I've been sexually assaulted before. And I know that, like, fight, flight, freeze feeling of, like, even if you're with, like, a partner that you feel so comfortable with, very safe, like, that feeling can still come up. And then it's like, okay, hey, like, I need a second. Like, I need to just, like, remind my body I'm in a safe place. I'm with a completely different person than what had previously happened. And this isn't the same situation. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's part of like the pause is just reorienting ourselves. Yeah. Grounding ourselves to like just being right here where we are. And another thought that I'm having is like, I'm wondering if like, you know, maybe doing some like topping from below Mm -hmm. might be full of like, like putting a different spin on it where like, you still feel like you're kind of in like a submissive position, but you also have like power in that position and that it's not that sense of safety. Yeah. Like it's not just about being like a helpless participant in sex. It's like, I also have like a sense of ownership in this experience. Mm. That's a really good point. Yeah. And as for filling in the gap, um, I apologize. You made a really good point. And I, kind of flooded my mind because I'm processing a lot of this. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I would say that, yeah, definitely, like, one night stands for me can be especially traumatized, like, re-traumatizing. So mm-hmm. I have actually stopped doing that. And 
I'm actually in a polyamorous relationship now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, and like totally cool one night it works really well for me. Yeah, like one night stands can be fun, but they're also not for everybody. Like I think there's this idea of like we have to like be having anonymous one night stands with with people, or else we haven't had like a full sex life, and that's not. If I'm a for sex everybody. positive feminist, then I yeah. have to. Yeah, no, one night stands <laughs> are are good, but they might not be good for you, and that's totally valid. Yeah, like for you, they may not be like an empowering experience. For you, they can be re-traumatizing, and that doesn't say anything negative about you or your sex life. That just means that you operate differently. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for me, like I said, I find like I I have a lot of security and trust with the partner that I'm with and I guess another uh, if you have other callers please let me know and you can take them sure, but no, I'm, I'm I guess one other part mm-hmm. one other part is like I find myself in my head like sometimes oddly enough like fantasizing about the the stuff that traumatized me and it's very confusing sure. mm-hmm. <laughs> and it it's in a way almost stressful, but I mean, again, as you said, taking a break is a really great thing. And I know if I told my current partner, like, Hey, like I'm not in the right headspace. Like I'm, I know, like, even if I enjoy what's happening, I'm going to feel terrible afterwards. Mm. Uh, You know, like, I don't know. (laughs) That's why, like when you were talking about working you know, with kids in the literal sandbox, it, it really resonated with me because I feel in a lot of ways that I was a child when I went through this. I did experience a bit of sexual abuse when I was a child by my own father. But, you know, it, the really, I guess, other than that, the really traumatizing thing was when I went through that in college. I mean, I had broken bones and mm-hmm. I have torn muscles that'll never heal kind of thing so but i find myself kind of reliving that well i hope that you know that like having those conflicting bodily feelings about yourself are completely normal like there are bodies respond sometimes without our consent like sometimes our Mm -hmm. bodies and our brains just like don't match up or like we get these intrusive thoughts and like they feel really stressful and like i hope that you know that that's normal like you are not thank you that doesn't say anything like bad about you or that you wanted it or whatever like bodies are just fucking complicated yeah and i i know i'm oversimplifying here but i i really think it's worth just highlighting quickly that our uh our, our arousal responses whether we are talking about a erection or vaginal lubrication or you know our heart rate or these things they rarely have anything to do with our judgments you know whether we deem something as ooh sexy or whether uh <laughs> we actually enjoy the thing those arousal responses, particularly for folks who have vaginas, are much more tied to our brain simply saying, oh, something in the neighborhood or related to the concept of sex is occurring. Therefore, I'm going to have that arousal response. There is a lot of great research about this and not enough people are talking about it. So many people, particularly women, are feeling really terribly about their reaction to a traumatic experience when that reaction had nothing to do with their desire, with their consent, with Mm -hmm. uh, their wishes. And to, it's just important to recognize that things like vaginal lubrication are not the same thing as emotional engagement or consent or investment in the experience. Those are bodily reactions that are largely beyond our control, and they don't indicate that you found something sexy. They just mean that part of your brain that is uh, responsible for scanning the area for things connected to sex has been activated. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, I've, I've actually looked into some research studies about that because there are, you know, victims of sexual assault who, you know, they're their court cases were either let off or, or, you know, dismissed because they experienced that and Mm -hmm. it has 
yeah, it has nothing to do with the actual experience. And for me, like I said, like, I, I think, yeah, definitely, you know, taking a breather, taking a moment to kind of ground would be really helpful. And that's, it seems so simple and yet I didn't really think about it, but that's a really great okay. answer. Sometimes we don't think about that stuff and it's just helpful to have another person like throw that idea out there. And it sounds like your partner that you have right now is very community communicative and <laughs> sensitive to what's going on with you and that they're very compassionate and like just being open with your partner of like hey like i need a second and your yeah, partner sounds like they will be totally lovely. okay with that hmm. yes they are absolutely lovely well thank you so much for your time i really appreciate it it's giving me a lot to think about and provided me some insight that it's taken me years in therapy <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, thank you. I thank you. I really appreciate your bravery and sharing your story with us, and I hope you have a great night tonight. All right, you as well. Good night. Yeah, I, I guess I just want to take a moment to repeat myself very quickly and say that uh, an orgasm is not the same thing as pleasure. An orgasm is not the same thing as consent. Neither is uh, arousal in any of its forms. One thousand percent. Like I said, bodies are fucking complicated and there's so many things that like our bodies do that like aren't our consent. Yeah. <laughs> like if you experience chronic pain, like if you get sick, like there's so many things that our bodies do we have no say over. That mm. includes our sexual functions. 